Productions a video review of the Hyatt Manchester Grand Hotel in San Diego, California. In this video, I will give you a review of the hotel, the hotel grounds, and the neighborhood around the hotel. I'm Chris. I've got a traveling panda, Topher. He's going to come back at the end and rate this hotel on the Topher scale. So stay tuned to see everything you want to know about staying in this hotel. The hotel is located conveniently about five blocks from San Diego's Guest Lamp District, which is San Diego's nightlife area. And it's also about a 15 minute walk to Horton Plaza, which is the big shopping center in downtown San Diego. Just right outside the door of the hotel behind me and across the street is Seaport Village. Seaport Village is a seaside quaint shopping center with lots of gift shops, restaurants, a neat place to do some touristing and see the sights of San Diego Bay. Everything in this hotel is quite grand. This is the grand entrance lobby. Uh, the check-in is in the wooden desks over there to the left. It's uh, kind of a three-story entrance area really neat. Makes me feel like in the olden days where everything was grand. The Hyatt is composed of two towers and one of the coolest things about this hotel is at the 40th floor of the main tower. It's this lounge, the top of the Hyatt lounge, that has some of the best views in all of San Diego. If you look out to the east of the lounge, you can see all of downtown, the gas lamp district, and the San Diego Convention Center just behind the Marriott. Looking out to the south, you can see San Diego Bay. There's a big ship right now in the middle of it. In the back is Coronado Island, and just to the right of Coronado is the North Island Naval Air Station. And then if you look out to the west, you can see Point Loma in the distance and the Seaport Tower, the other tower of the Hyatt, right in front. On the 33rd floor of the main tower is the Hyatt Grand Club, the concierge lounge that is one of the biggest concierge lounges I've seen in any Hyatt. The seating capacity is 180. They serve breakfast and evening appetizers. For evening appetizers one night, they had a create your own salad bar uh, that if you like salad looked pretty good and the desserts which i prefer had a really nice view also the fourth floor of the hotel is home to a number of sports courts up on the rooftop i've never seen this in a hotel before they're all complimentary for hotel guests there's a basketball we can shoot some hoops doesn't mean i can make it in uh, over here they've got some more kid friendly type games they've got these uh, bean bag type games this is much easier where you can just kind of throw the bean bags into the hole. Hey, I got one in, that's pretty good. Uh, right here is the volleyball court that you can play volleyball. It's not a sand court, so you probably don't want to be jumping for this one. Over this way, they've got horseshoes where you can test your skill by putting these horseshoes on the pole. I got it near the pole, does that count? And then the final uh, couple set of courts, they have two rooftop tennis courts up here. Neat! Between the two towers, they've got the backyard playground area where they have some even more kid-friendlier games, including air hockey and foosball. Between the two towers is where they have the main family swimming pool. This one had a lot of kids in it, and next to it had a nice fire warming pit that had a view of the bay. On the third floor is the adult pool, a slightly more serene space. Uh, they've got some complimentary inner tubes or floaty things over there, one that's even a pineapple inner tube. They've got some cool adult games over here, like really big Connect Four. This is pretty fun to play. And over here, they have really big Jenga. I think I'm brave enough to pull this one out and not let it fall. What do you think? Uh, look at that. Okay, which one next? The fourth floor of the Seaport Tower housed the hotel's gym, which was a pretty nice workout space that has lots of machines, lots of windows, pretty clean, pretty nice place to work out. Heading down the escalator back towards the lobby is the lobby bar that often had evening musical entertainment. Just to the left of that bar is an old time shoe shine stand, the hotel's gift shop, a FedEx office. And just beyond the FedEx office, there is a art gallery for all of your art needs. Making our way back through the lobby to the other side, we find the hotel's 24 hour market, Market One, which also serves coffee 24 hours a day uh, and gourmet foods. 
And just to the right down here are some neat s'mores kits that you can use upstairs in that fireplace by the pool. And just beyond Market 1 is Redfield Sports Bar, the hotel's main restaurant serving traditional American fare. The Hyatt has one other restaurant, Sally's Seafood on the Water. It gets its name because they serve seafood right on the water. Yes, out there to the right, that's the water. I know it's dark and you can't see it, but trust me, it's out there. Now that we've seen everything in and around the hotel, let's check out one of the hotel rooms. This is room 2935, a club double room on the 29th floor. Let me show you around the room. One of the nicest things about the room is actually the view on the 29th floor. Here's a picture of what it looks like just out that way. Pretty nice, right by the window because that's a major attraction of the room. There's a very nice glass table with two chairs that you can sit at. The room has two double beds. Uh, you can see on our double beds are our two twin Winnie the Poohs uh, from Tokyo Disney. They accompanied us at the Park Hyatt and Carlsbad as well, which might be another video review you might be interested in. You can see the link at the end. And Topher is right here. We'll bring him back a little later for the Topher rating of this room after we've slept in it. Uh, there's a nice iHome clock on the side so that you can uh, play tunes from your iPhone. Uh, there's a second bed over this way. And then if we come over here, there's a nice glass top desk that has two tiers, one tier on the top, one tier on the bottom. Very interesting lamp and a very interesting um, art thing on the wall. I think it's supposed to resemble the sunset. I'd almost say picture, but it's definitely not. That's definitely art. Uh, there's a big flat screen television up here. Uh, underneath the television, there is a... Um, in-room cooler, I'd call it a refrigerator, they call it a cooler, set to 45 degrees. Uh, there's a couple drawers, the drawers are empty for you to put your stuff in. Up on top of the countertop, there's a Keurig coffee machine, uh, along with some Starbucks K-Cups and some Tazo teas. Uh, there's a little spot right here that you could either use as a bench to sit on, or in this case, we've used it to place our luggage. This is an adjoining room, so there's a room over there. I won't take you in to see it, because it's not ours. If we come over this way, I'll show you inside the closet, after I turn on the light right here. Inside the closet is a mirror, um, a uh, rack you could put your luggage on, a very nice presidential collection robe, a safe, and some hangers. Many of the usual things you would find in a closet. But this is a very nice, sturdy luggage rack. And on our way to the bathroom, I will point out over here in the corner, as you come in the room, there's another art piece. Uh, this is where they keep the ice bucket, and there are two complimentary bottles of water for VIP members, since this is the um, club level floor. So you either be paying more or a Hyatt Platinum member uh, to be upgraded here. Final room, bathroom, just this way. Uh, the bathroom has one of these sliding type doors to get in and out, space saving measure. There's a toilet that has some art over it. Uh, there is a bathtub. Um, it is just a fixed shower head and a bathtub. The soaps are by June Jacobs and they are green tea and cucumber scent, which is a very interesting scent. I'm looking forward to trying that. I'll let you know how it is. Final uh, area of the bathroom is the sink. They have uh, done the Kleenex in a very decorative uh, type display there. Almost looks like a Kleenex flower of sorts. Uh, and there's some nice amenities on the sink, mouthwash and toothpaste. Okay, so it's the next morning and it's that time. It's time for us to do our review. So we'll start by giving our rating and then we'll tell you what's good and bad about this hotel. So we rated on the Topher scale. That means Topher tells us how many Tophers out of five this hotel is gonna be rated. So Topher, how many Tophers does it get? Three Tophers. Three Tophers. Okay, so now let's talk about why does it get three Tophers. And uh, <clears throat> so first of all, we'll tell you what we like about it and then we'll tell you probably what we don't like about it. Um, and I'll just let you know, as we're giving it the Topher rating, we're not comparing it to the other hotels in downtown San Diego, because we haven't stayed a lot of other hotels in downtown San Diego, but we're comparing it to other Hyatts, because we actually have stayed at quite a few other Hyatt properties. Uh, so the hotel has a really great location. Uh, it is right in the heart of downtown San Diego, 
looks out on the bay. The views are truly amazing. The views are probably one of the reasons to stay here. It's also right next to the convention center. Uh, so if you're here for convention, that's probably the second reason to stay here. Uh, just steps away from the gas lamp district as well, which is San Diego's nightlife area. Uh, so that's really great. It is a grand iconic property, um, but on the con side of things, uh, once you get out of the lobby and into the rooms, the rooms don't seem quite as grand as uh, you might expect them to be, uh, particularly if you're paying upwards of $400 a night, which is what this hotel often goes for on busy weekends here. Um, the rooms are nicely appointed, good color schemes, not too wacky, we like that. Uh, but uh, part of the things that we're also docking at uh, Topher's for are one, the food offerings. Um, the food offerings in the club lounge for a diamond member were kind of sad, actually. Uh, when we went there for the evening dessert hour at 8.40, there were no desserts out. I had to ask somebody to bring more desserts out. Uh, when we were there for breakfast, there was only one hot item for breakfast. Um, so related to other hotels in San Diego, there's the Park Hyatt Carlsbad. If you're a Diamond member, you get quite an impressive breakfast buffet. I do realize that that is a Park Hyatt and this is a Hyatt Grand, but the Park Hyatt often has um, cheaper rates than the Hyatt Grand here has. The second area that we're going to dock the hotel on is cleanliness. Uh, the bathroom was not really as clean as one would expect. There were little hairs. Um, not from Topher and not from the Winifreds or me, uh, but from previous guests that we stayed in the room. So uh, we don't find that really good. And uh, the last one is just um, the general service in the hotel. When we checked in, they asked us if we want turn down service. We said we did, uh, but nobody came to turn down our room. So, you know, it is a big hotel. It has 1,600 rooms, uh, but uh, for an iconic property that is so grand, we would expect a little better service, a little better food, and it to be a little more clean. But if you're coming, and you really like views and you really want to be close to the convention center and this probably isn't too bad of a bet for you all right well we hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like to see more like it uh, please subscribe because we have new videos uploaded to youtube every sunday or you can follow us on facebook twitter google plus links in the description below or you might enjoy watching one of these other videos uh, one of them is a video review of that park hyatt on vr in carlsbad which if you like hyatt's you should really consider that one if you're staying here too all right Bye-bye.